Hi guys, it's Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. Today I'm going to be visually disassembling the Victorinox Outdoor Tool. So this was apparently a custom build for an outdoor school in Europe. So it's an 111mm uh, Victorinox based on the line lock pattern and it's not available. I've done a fair bit of research on it and when you see something like that and you say, oh I'd really like that. Yeah and you can't have one, the only option is to build it yourself. So it's obviously been put together in the Victorinox workshop with parts that they've got available. So I want to go through exactly what's gone into it and possibly how to re replicate it but it's got a lot of donor parts from a lot of donor uh, knives so the expense might just not be worth the uh, the effort. Okay. So on the outside it's got black nylon scales that hold the toothpick and tweezers. So given the choice of nylon scales this is off a uh, a sentinel one-handed that's why there's no tools on the back this is a custom build of mine. So the only ones that have black scales that I know of is the picnicker and I couldn't find one of those on eBay. So, faced with the choice of back nylon, or the M grip as they call them, such as this soldier. So I got this one off eBay, it's a second handy, it's a bit of a hard leaf, but lock's still good, made in 2014. I briefly thought about modifying my 09 soldier, but I've been carrying it for far too long. So this would give me most of the bits I want. So, what they've done, they've removed the can opener and replaced it with a ream of a 93 Alox. Now this ream is a fabulous tool for striking fire steels, starting holes in wood. I can see why they would really want one. Now the ream is narrower than, well in this case the blade, but on, in this tool set it would be the um, cap lifter. So they've bolted it up with a spacer, not off a, a Pioneer, but off a soldier. It doesn't have the keyring tag. And they've instead of on the left side of the blade, they've put it in on the right to make up the gap. And it's, it doesn't look exactly perfect because from what I've looked at on the line, it seems to be bulging the side scale. So that's that. I'm still torn on the idea because a lot of the can rations don't feature very much in my um, loadout these days it's still a handy tool to have and they, these guys do have a ream, it's not as good and it is on the back so you end up with no can opener and two reams okay. main blade is, has a plain edge which I really do like for outdoorsy stuff that's why yeah, I put this one in the picnic which did have a serrated no, they did have a plain blade, but it wasn't one-handed opening. So one-handed opening, liner lock, which doubles as a liner lock for the um, cap lifter. So that's pretty straightforward. So one-handed sentinel would give me the one, the plain blade. Now, on the pictures I've got, it has a double thickness of liner on the um, left hand side of the uh, main blade it's got two stacked together and I don't know why I really don't then it's a pair of scissors now there's no there's no Phillips at the bottom end so like my old fashioned uh, outrider here it's basically exactly the same as that so that shares the, the same type of uh, back spring as the older uh, wood saws. So I'll need a set of uh, scissors. Now they're the same size as the uh, Alox X. So they're the same scissors as that but going to need a different back spring. Now there's no liner between the scissors and the wood saw which is which was quite common back in the day. So um, it's also common on the soldier between the main blade and the wood saw, so nothing out of the ordinary. 
Now, if you have a look at the light thickness of the liners on the soldier and well, the 111, the one near the uh, can opener and that is actually thinner than this one here. So I don't know exactly why that is. So the bottom tool set coming to the uh, soldier is your wood saw. And the, wood, and the soldier has a Phillips and they've used a, um, a corkscrew. So I, I could use either. I've got uh, got a corkscrew. The only advantage I can see to having the corkscrew is I could put one of those sunglasses or reading glasses screwdrivers in there, which as I'm getting older, probably useful. Alright, so another liner. So yeah, this is what a, a backspring looks like. That's got a corkscrew or reamer or whatever you want running through it so you can see how that works. So the problem is now is to work out what would be the most economical way of building this without breaking the bank because there's a lot of components um, as I'm seeing it. I would have sold you a second hand for 30 Australian dollars including shipping. That would give me a good base start. Pioneer X's aren't cheap, unless I can find one on eBay or somewhere like that. Then I'm going to need a, um, a Sentinel for a plain blade, but I do have the original blade. I took out the picnicker. It's not one-handed, but it is a plain edge, which I prefer for outdoorsy stuff. So at what point do I call real reasonable and how much I want to spend? Anyway guys, hang in there, I'll see what I come up with. Well guys, I've been doing my online research and working out the uh, the most economical way of doing it. So even though I've got this soldier which only cost me 30 bucks, I'm going to need a um, at least a sentinel. That'll give me the, the blade I want. And It'll give me one more plain back spring, which I can use for my scissors. Now, if I could buy a, a Pioneer X for the chips one I can get off Amazon, is about $56. So, plus a Sentinel. Sentinels are running at about $27. So, we're nearly at $100 there. Now, I did see a black. 111 millimeter outrider. I thought, whoa, that's everything I need apart from that blade and the uh, and the ream, all in one package. So I thought, yeah, that's. Sure. Then I looked at it very closely and I realised it's an older side lock model. I could tell by the order of the tools and the size of the cap lifter. So. No choice. There was a uh, a red art rider for seventy two dollars, so that would give me virtually everything I need, minus the ream. So rather than using the Pioneer, I just get a basic Pioneer. Now the Pioneer keyring space, which I'm going to need, has the the piece for the um, keyring, obviously enough. The soldier didn't have that. But I have got a soldier spacer anyway. But I seem to be short of rim. I'll have to go hunting because I've certainly got one of these rims. And so I think if you're going to buy, be buying the stuff, guys, it's going to be an expensive pocket knife. So Red Outrider, $72. A Sentinel for the blade, $27. So pretty much 100 bucks there. You're going to need some brass rod. 2.5 and 3 mil, and if you want black scales, there was a seller on there, but you want about forty dollars for a set of scales. I could certainly live with other types of scales for that. So that's on my shopping list. Now there's a guy who comes into my markets every couple of weeks, and he gets the ones he sees at the airport. So on my shopping list is a uh, 111 millimeter line lock outrider. And I've got everything else I need, guys. Anyway, guys, if this content helps you out and helps you plan to make good stuff, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I shall catch up with you.